This is Jedi General Pong Krail. I welcome you to the Voice of the Republic podcast. Listen to this podcast. That is in order. Your reputation precedes you, General. The reputation of a great new podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Voice of the Republic podcast. This is Bonnie Peace, Baru from Star Wars. Time to see who's smart enough to join the hunt. The hunt for the Voice of the Republic podcast. So, I hear we're going to be taking out separatists on the Voice of the Republic podcast. Smaller in number, are we? But larger in mind is the Voice of the Republic podcast. <laughs> of all the Jedi, why did I have to end up with the Voice of the Republic podcast? As the Republic juggernaut rolls across the disputed worlds, citizens all across the galaxy turn to the Voice of the Republic podcast for help. Hello, this is C-3PO, Human Cyborg Relations. Master Luke can't come on the Voice of the Republic today. He's out fighting the stormtroopers that just landed. I shall have him be a guest on the Republic podcast as soon as possible. Oh dear. Hello Star Wars fans across the galaxy, welcome to the Voice of the Republic podcast. My name is Daniel and joining me is fellow host Rory Williamson. Hello. And also joining us are co-hosts Graham Kavanagh and Lizzie Carty dodd It's the night not to pronounce surnames right. Hello both of you. <laughs> nice, nice stumble. Um, <laughs> Laheeding, hello. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. And Graham just decided to not acknowledge that <laughs> actually I'd... I can't blame him <laughs> <laughs> everybody ignore the, ignore the Scottish guy um, but yes well, don't even go okay. there don't even go there Rory um, <laughs> so if, you'd like well, to, if you'd like to introduce tonight's guest we have voice to Greg Berger, who voiced General Kalani in the Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 5 on Dronach. So how are you, Greg? I'm doing very well, and now I know the answer to the question. Uh, if a name introduction stumbled in cyberspace, would you uh, would you hear a tree fall in the forest? And the answer... I, I Actually, I still don't know the answer. Thanks for having me with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure having you on, having you join us, so... Yeah, we'll get right into the question. So, Daniel, take it away. Okay, then. So, hello there, Greg. Hello there. I only go where I'm invited, so I thank all of you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to and be we're here. glad to have you here. So, my first question is, what was your overall experience in the Clone Wars? You know, I, uh, I had this uh, conversation with Andrew Kashino, who was in the same uh, days and the same arc that I was. Uh, it is such an honor, regardless of, of how iconic or how long term uh, your career is or has been up until the point that you're invited into that room and that company, uh, the honor of joining that uh, franchise and that particular group of actors and that undertaking is so great uh, that you just uh, feel like you're running with the thoroughbreds. And uh, aside from the festivity in the lobby outside and the uh, shared excitement about about the project that you're all undertaking and the camaraderie of being in each other's company, which I frankly share with voice actors in general. Uh, I've been doing it for many, many years. I teach uh, and I still am Cinderella going to the ball every time I am allowed to assume <clears throat> any character. but. Uh, joining that storyline and joining uh, that uh, cast is is a fantastic honor that I take very seriously, uh, and I take the honor of being invited into that fraternity, sorority, uh, that 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 group is something I take seriously. I take the work seriously. I take the company seriously. 
and I take the honor seriously. So it it felt like uh, being allowed to put on the green jacket at at at, uh, at the Masters in golf. It it uh, it is something that that humbles me and makes me proud and honored at the same time. And that's a that's a straight from the heart answer. I couldn't be more sincere. And that's a great answer. Um, my my second question is: Have you seen the On the Run arc? If so, did you enjoy it? I did see it. Uh, and and Kalani's entrance, and they they uh, they favored him very heavily. Visually, uh, he he springs into the screen and uh, and makes a very powerful and sobering entrance and every visual presence uh that he makes is a sobering one and uh i i know they were happy in the booth with auditions they were happy in the booth <laughs> when i stepped into the room and uh i i think i i see all of this as 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 uh a camaraderie of voice, artistry, writing. Everything needs to join together and and uh, be all of a piece when it all comes together. And yeah, I think it. I think it uh, kind of hits it out of the park. I I loved everything I saw visually, but with with uh, I just I, I think Kalani is a very strong presence. And uh, visually, I think it marries really nicely to to everything that uh, that I bent over backwards to. Well, I didn't literally bend over backwards, but every, <laughs> everything <laughs> because it's really hard to it's really hard to to voice act when you're bent over backwards. But but uh, everything everything that I sought to bring to it, I I feel like uh, was borne out visually and and uh, fit right in. I thought it was a great fit and. Uh, I'm I'm really proud of the results. And he's definitely an awesome character. So my third question, third and last question is: If you were offered a role in Star Wars Rebels, would you do it? I'm going to let you answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you, I don't know how you uh, how you answer via Skype in capital letters, but uh, Y E S is how <laughs> it's spelled. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so um, thank you for answering all my questions and I'll hand you over to Rory now. Very good. So Greg, my first question to you is was it difficult to do General Kalani's voice and did they only give you any specific instructions on how to voice them? You know, I think they were I think they were so pleased uh as it was expressed to me with the audition that that basically they felt like they had a new uh, instrument in the orchestra is the way Dave put it when when I was in session and they really liked the way it fit against uh, they 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 kind of talked about it musically and and uh, they just liked it uh, as as a fit and uh, I'm not sure whether any, any if any processing was done I think it was pretty minimal um i have a pretty broad uh wheelhouse of uh, i mean vocally all of us have a palette that goes from the highest note we hit to the lowest note we hit and it's it's way down there for me but it's it's within the range of things that i do and uh, the goal was to keep it dispassionate enough to uh be someone uh, to be this droid general who can take orders and and execute them dispassionately and uh, coldly and without questioning his superior who's issuing the orders and he's really uh, a decisively get it done general um, and a decisively get it done droid general and uh i they they expressed extreme pleasure in in what i was giving them so um it it uh it seemed to work pretty quickly out of the box and uh it's 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 also you can't you can't talk about what i brought in without talking about how 
incredible it is to be in that room of actors. A lot of a lot of voice recording these days is done almost in a vacuum where you're stuck in a room by yourself. And um, Clone Wars re was recorded ensemble where where, of course, everything you're doing becomes augmented and magnified by by just the presence of everybody else, the dramatic situation that's being built by the presence of everyone talking and listening to everyone. And that, I mean, that holds true even if you're a droid general seemingly devoid of feeling, you're still in in the dramatic situation that's, that's building the crescendos. Um, so you're affected by everybody around you, manufacturing, vocally manufacturing. What I'm leading up to is even if you're a droid general, you're still a character. Everything you do, everything I do, uh, as far as voice characterizations, I approach as a character. You're thinking through the the mind, even if it's a mechanized mind of uh, of the character. So, um, no, the, the short the short answer is no. I just gave you the long answer, but but uh, getting there was not the difficult part. It was just understanding how it fit into the story. Yeah. So, well, my second question is, what was it like getting to work with other members of the Star Wars the Clone Wars cast, and who did you meet? Uh, thankfully and happily, all of them, almost everyone, is is old friends of mine. Uh, I've been doing this for quite some time, and everybody is. Uh, I, I don't think I met too many new people that day. Uh, Corey Burton is a friend of mine for decades. Jim Cummings is a friend of mine for decades. Uh, Tom Kane I've known for uh, for half, half a lifetime. Um, uh, Andrew Cascino I've known for, for many, several years. Uh, James Arnold Taylor is a great friend. I really was in a room full of friends, uh, literally uh, wonderful friends. But but uh, first time on this project, which which just made it all the sweeter. Yeah, definitely. My third question is, other than the Clone Wars, you're also known for having voiced in many Star Wars video games, such as Jedi Power Battles, Jedi Knights, Knights of the Old Republic. Which Star Wars video game was the most fun for you to work on? Oh, uh, well, uh, for, first, quickly, uh, in your previous question, it was the first time I had worked with Dave Filoni. So even though um, we were kind of communicating via a monitor, it was still a great first meeting with him. That was very exciting for me. Uh, on the games, uh, Lucas Arts would send a uh, representative down. Uh, they were all phenomenal. In Knights of the Republic, I had pages and pages of Hatti's dialogue to learn, uh, not learn, but read uh, phonetically. So that was fantastic in its own way. Um, obviously, uh, stepping into the shoes of, of uh, well, Darth, Darth Maul for a brief period of time, just getting to say die, Jedi, die, is, is a great thing to add to anybody's life experience. Uh, uh, I had a brief stint as Plo Koon in one of the games, uh, Jin Rizzo, uh, uh, Sayunga, uh, oh, uh, there were there were just so many exper different experiences and then peripheral characters in most of the games. Just the experience of being in the games, and this was earlier earlier in in um, the history of of the franchise. Just any opportunity to step into this franchise is is a great one for an actor and a, a fan. Uh, you know, you know, you're you're uh, becoming a part of what will always be the history of of Star Wars. Uh, 
Um, it's not like anything else. Uh, it means something. It's it's one of those realms, um, although a created one that almost has uh, its own reality to it. It's so it's so uh, detailed and and has such a history of its own and so many devotees like you guys uh, and your audience that uh, that it almost creates its own reality. So uh, I, I'm not trying to, to skip the answer, but but uh, there's there's just so many great experiences, including including just the personal one of being a part of all of it. Yeah, definitely. And that's a great answer. My final question is, aside from Star Wars, which of your other voice acting roles would you say you're best known for? Me Grimlock, me Dinobot leader. Uh, I, I did all of the original Transformers. I did all of the original G.I. Joe. I still, uh, I, I, as recently as last year, I returned as Grimlock in Transformers Fall of Cybertron. I, since the very first Garfield special, have barked and slurped animated Odie and the Garfield show, I still do Odie, Squeak the Mouse, Harry the Ailey Cat, Herman the Mailman, in the new episodes of the Garfield show, um, Frank Welker, who was Megatron on uh, the original Transformers, is the voice of Garfield the Cat, we lost the original Garfield Lorenzo music a few years ago. But uh, I mean, I, I, I thankfully and happily um, have many characters that I'm the voice of are iconic characters. Uh, I was the voice of Agent K in the animated Men in Black. Shoot him, Jesus, Cerebro Fecaloid. No, you can't drive the, Jay, get out of the car. Give me the keys. You're not driving slick. That's all there is to it. And, uh, I was the Gromble in Our Real Monsters on Nickelodeon. He is Crom, Oblina. You're late for class. Sit down. Open your monster books. So um, I, uh, oh, and uh, I was a detective named Cornfed on a show called Duckman, which still makes the rounds. In fact, uh, all four seasons of that have come out on DVD with uh, a special features reel that I'm highly featured in. I, I, um, I have been doing this consistently, and I still do it consistently um, for quite some time. And I've managed to stay consistently busy for a long time. And I, I write about it, and I teach, and I and I work, and I I I mean, I've been allowed to do what I love for my most of my entire adult life, and I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. <laughs> wow yeah it's really cool so thank you Greg for answering all of my questions and I'll hand you over to Graham hello hey Graham how you um, doing Graham I'm I'm very well at the moment thank you um my first question is uh is there any specific method that you use to get into character like any character at all like um what, what what's your um what's your method behind getting into that character well, I, I kind of spoke to it before, and I, and I talk about this when I'm teaching. I, I don't think uh, that the studios or any director in particular is looking for a voice per se. They're all looking for character. What they're, what they're casting is character. And once you, once you realize that you're kind of in cahoots with the writer and the artist and everything that they're giving you is clues to that character, you're already steps ahead. It's all detective work. You take a look for all of all of the clues in what the artist has given you and all of the clues in the breakdown that the writer has given you. And then you look for facial features. You look for, you know, outstanding features. You look for hints that the that the writer has given you about about character traits and things and things that are covert and things that are overt and then you bring your own third dimension to all of the 
other uh, elements that have been given to you, and then you try to make it yours so that you stand out from the crowd. Uh, that's the point in performance where you decide whether you want to be in the chorus or whether you want to stand out. And if you make it individual enough to stand out, either you won't get the job or you will distinguish yourself with something really individual, but you won't blend into the into the chorus where you'll get lost. You'll you'll be noticed. Um, I've made a career of being a very bad impressionist. Sometimes it'll suggest uh, a breakdown will suggest a, a celebrity to me, but I'm very bad at impersonating them. So what I'll come up with will be something entirely new. Sometimes you can combine a few different ideas in your head and come up with something that's a hybrid. Whatever it is, you want to make what you do different enough from what everybody else does to uh, separate it from the crowd. I mean, that's advice to anyone going in for any kind of an interview. interview. You don't want to be mistaken for being the same as everybody else. You want to do something in your interview or audition that distinguishes you and makes you kind of the one and only, and uh, that's the way I approach everything I do. But as far as as far as character, my, the palette that I paint from is is everyone I've ever known, everything I've ever done or seen or experienced or imagined, and that opens up an entire world of possibility. The good people I've met, known, and studied. Uh, make me uh, make me uh, skilled in portraying good people. The people I've disliked along the way make me skilled at uh, at at uh, playing uh, unsavory people. So so n no life experience is wasted on an actor. None. Okay, uh, awesome. Thanks. Um, my second and last question is, um, it appears that you also voiced Darth Maul in the Star Wars 1, the Phantom Menace video game. Uh, when you got the role, did you hope to maybe try and bring something new to the character for the lines that you had? Or did you try to, or were you directed to try and use a voice from the film and more or less, you know, replicate it? Uh, the the director of that particular game, Daryl O'Farrell, who came down from LucasArts, said, uh, "Let's let's kind of explore new things. Let's let's uh, use what we already know has been established, and let's try and cover the waterfront. Let let's there's not that much dialogue in the game, and a lot of it is just sort of dark and threatening and 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 uh, pointed. Um, but let's try it." A number of ways so so uh, we kept it kind of deeply darkly cinematically uh darth molly uh, and i i think what ended plugged into the game was sort of in the vein in the vein of the film but but probably not all the way to it uh maybe um toned down a little uh, it, I, I think it was it was uh, it didn't have as much dynamic to it because it it didn't move as it, it wasn't as uh, oh I don't know it, it, it didn't have I don't think it had as much uh, range as as uh, what happened the, the action in the game was not quite equal to the action in the film so it was a little more internal and a little less external um but i think i think it kind of conformed to the film in general uh without without being an exact uh take off on it uh, okay uh awesome uh thanks very much for answering my questions i'm gonna hand you over to lizzie now thank you hello Hey, hey. How are you? 
I think I'm good. Uh, I mean, I think I'm well, and I'm enjoying this immensely. How are you? I'm very good, thank you very much. Um, you're my first separatist I'm getting to speak to, so this is a very big honor. <laughs> well, my honor as well. <laughs> thank you. Um, my first question for you is, um, have you ever acted live? And if so, how does it compare to voice acting, and which do you prefer? Uh, <clears throat> everything began live for me. In fact, I was seen uh, on the Los Angeles stage by uh, someone who was quite prominent in uh, animated animation casting. Uh, I was doing a the Los Angeles production of a uh, Carol Churchill show uh, that, oh, it just got very clear. Are we still connected? Now it just got very staticky again. Um, uh, called Cloud Nine in in Los Angeles, and uh, actually uh, Gordon Hunt, who was doing a lot of the direction at Hanna Barbera in those days, had seen me on stage, and it was because of on stage work that I was considered for animation. Uh, and that night, w which he saw me on stage, uh, actually changed every day of the rest of my life. He. Uh, asked to meet me backstage and said if I was as versatile as what he had seen on stage, he should know about me for animation. And uh, I'm normally much more polite, but I said, uh, if if you're serious, uh, I would love to be doing animation. And if you would listen to my demo, uh, you've had it sitting in the pile for several months if you could move it from the bottom of the pile to the top of the pile and give it a listen i'd be very grateful <laughs> and he said he said well you've got a lot of nerve and i said no normally i don't have any at all and i said but I w i'm not going to let this moment go by and he, he said no i'm glad he said uh, he said uh, i will listen to it uh, immediately and he did and he had me in uh, shortly after. Now, as far and and uh, I really began my voiceover animation career uh, because of speaking up for myself that night. I really did. That's a very very true story. Um, as far as comparing, obviously there's a difference between stage, where uh, first of all you have to know all of your lines and as a rule, everybody else's in case they forget theirs and you get stuck. Uh, but the curtain goes up, the, the audience sits there and you tell them the story that you tell them. And uh, however, whatever the dynamic of the audience and whatever the surprises of the stage that night, uh, for those two hours or so, whatever happens, happens. Um, animation is a controlled medium where even though there's lots and lots of creativity in the booth and in the editing room, there is an editing room, so things can be pieced together. And sometimes, especially in interactive video games, uh, you, you, you often find yourself working by yourself like one piece of a jigsaw puzzle where it's all assembled later, so uh, there's less of that feeling of ensemble and that feeling of camaraderie and um, you you may only be telling your one piece of the story and the rest of the story may be assembled by other people or even if you're working in a group lucky enough to work in a group it's still uh, the end product is done by people editing your story or if it's animation uh, adding the visual element, adding the music and effects, adding the rest of the story. Uh, stage is live, 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 and and you know two hours later, uh, you you have you have instant feedback on exactly what you're doing, and the adrenaline is is always at at uh, a super high level, and uh, the response is immediate because you it's you and the audience so uh, I mean I love both but I love both for different reasons right okay thank you very much um, my so, next question 
my next question is um Kalani, I thought, had so much potential as a character, and I know many, including myself, were wanting to see a kind of showdown between him and Grievous. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, and are you disappointed that, so far, Kalani has not been furthered as a character? Well, I would love to show, have a showdown. <laughs> In fact, today would be a good day for a showdown. Um, oh, brilliant. Uh, I, 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 uh, I can only say that, that I think, uh, there is unlimited potential there as well. I think, uh, I think that kind of coldness, uh, can insert itself into almost any scenario. I think it's a very growable character. Uh, and I'm not just saying that selfishly. Uh, I uh, I feel like there's a lot of potential there, um, and and uh, and I feel uh, just like it's it's a it's a it's a visually potent character, and I think um, it's a vocally potent character. And sure, I would love. I would always love to see where things like that go when they're allowed to grow. I, I would agree with you. Lovely. Um, may I just say that was, that literally just made my whole week hearing you say that. And uh, based upon the reaction we're getting in the chat right now, it did for a lot of other people as well. So oh. thank you. Thank you very much for such an illustrative response. Um, right. My next question is, uh, Gosh, <laughs> if I can stop laughing. Um, is there one character that you've voiced over the years that you feel a connection to? You know what? Uh, I, I feel, uh, and I again, I'm not wearing rose-colored glasses. I take my work so personally and so seriously. At the same time, don't get me wrong, it's joyous, and it's not like doing construction, and it's not, it's not like... Uh, it's not like heavy lifting. It, it is joyous, but but I believe I feel like all of these characters are my children. I don't have a favorite. That's how much I love everything that I'm allowed to do. Uh, I, I'm not avoiding the question. I I just I I don't I don't have favorites because they're all my favorites. I I really love my work and I love the opportunity to be behind a microphone. Um, and uh, I love that I've been allowed to do it. The one thing that I can't do, no matter how, no matter how good my work, is I can't make a director or a producer or a studio come to the same conclusion. I've been, you know, there, there, there's some quotes that are memorable, and one is, "The harder I work, the luckier I get." Uh, I've always loved that. I, I, I. You know, I, I, uh, there is, there's, there's no one successful who can leave good fortune out of the equation. At some point, you have to be fortunate enough to continue to be chosen um, to be allowed to do whatever it is that you love doing. Uh, and I know that I've been very, very fortunate over a number of years. Um, to be allowed to continue doing this, and I and I, I love it, and I love the characters. And now I've been going literally around the world uh, uh, as a special guest at conventions and meeting uh, fans one to one, and uh, it's it's a great it's it's a great privilege, and. Um, uh, I really love it. I know people that are kind of uh, shy or averse to the convention vibe. I, I, I love it, can't get enough of it, and uh, I really enjoy the opportunity of panels and signings and one-to-one -one meetings uh, with fans, and it, it's, uh, it's, it's been a phenomenal travel opportunity for me. It's just sort of the other side of these iconic characters that I've been 
had the good fortune to voice over the years. Wonderful. Um, that makes that makes total sense. Um, and I mean, I can imagine, like you said, such a personal connection to all these characters. I mean, you're, you're giving them voice. So, I mean, again, it, ma it makes sense that you couldn't exactly choose a favorite. Um, my final question is slightly off topic and admittedly we haven't had as much success with it in the past as perhaps I would like, but we're hoping that perhaps you're the lucky one today. Um, what do you think of the Nemoidians? What do I think of what? The Nemoidians. <laughs> I missed it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the there's, Trade there's Federation. There's so much static on the line. One. Sorry. Um, the, the, the Trade Federation people from episode one. I. <laughs> I could only do. Uh, I'm. I'm. I'm absent the tools to answer your question. Fair enough. Um, all right then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> No, I so totally told you. I so totally told you, Lizzie. I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought this one would Three work. weeks in a row. <laughs> three weeks and three we'll same answers. One day. One day. They say, we, they say we do the best we can with the tools we have. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, that's yeah. the rest, that's all the questions I have then. Thank you very much for for taking the time <clears throat> to answer them and for giving, again, such illustrative and uh, eloquent responses. Oh, that's a beautiful thing for you to say after I just said something terribly stupid. But thank you. <laughs> that's all right. <clears throat> so, um, so it's time. Uh, yeah, it's time for fan calls. Um. So it's the usual, either call in at 321-800-5802 or add channel 1138 on Skype. Or if you've got me or Rory on Skype, just send us a message and we'll pop you into the chat. So, yes, the lines are now open. And I think we have our first caller. I believe we do. Um, first, if you yeah. I was going to do it discreetly, but that defeated the purpose. Hello. Oh, and here he is. Hello. Welcome. Oh, hello, Greg. It's great to be able to talk to you. Um, I really admire your work as Kalani and Clone Wars. And I have one question for you. Kalani is the first ever super tactical droid uh, in the Clone Wars, uh, or in Star Wars, basically. So how does it feel to be the first super tactical droid in all of Star Wars, in all in that big <laughs> universe? Uh, it feels fantastic to be the first anything in anything, but to be the first super tech in Clone Wars is an elevated honor because uh, of the world it represents a first in. Uh, I, I, uh, I'm honored to be in it in any capacity, to, but uh, uh, to mark a famous first in that universe is, is extra special. Thanks for your question. Yes, thank you for answering it. So that was my only question, actually. So. Oh, so thank you for joining us, um, Alex. And, and, yeah. and yeah. thanks thank for you. your support. I really appreciate it. And may the force be with you. Back at you. And we have another caller, I believe. Or not. Hello. Hello, caller. Yeah, this is Dan. Hi, Dan. So oh, like I didn't to... realize it got on so quickly. Yes, it did. Um, <laughs> so your question? Yeah, I was just curious. I'm, I'm a big Transformers fan. I know this is passing uh, on first, but I just wanted to say thank you for being a part of my childhood. I I followed Transformers way back since I was like eight years old in 1984, 1985 era. So just that's great. And I played the new video game with you, and I was just curious if you Rimlock is making any future appearances. That you know uh, for, of, that you can reveal. First of all, thanks for being there. Uh, second of all, nothing that I'm aware of. Uh, and uh, 
Third of all, uh, keep those cards and emails coming in. Uh, fandom has been absolutely unbelievable. And uh, you're, you're not uh, the first or the 10,000th to uh, be uh, supportive of, uh, of, let me put it this way. Uh, there, there is not an image of Grimlock that can appear online, it seems, or it seems in cyberspace or my Facebook or uh, anywhere that I can look online that doesn't have uh, someone uh, tagging my name to it uh, after it, it all began when you said it did in your, in your childhood. And the fact that uh, people have stayed so loyal to uh, seeing it uh, attached, people have stayed so loyal to attaching my name to it as they have to a few other characters over uh, names and uh, attached to characters over all these years is absolutely mind numbing and humbling. Uh, me speechless. It it uh, it's uh, it's really fantastic. And when I had the uh, Matt Teacher, who was the game developer for Transformers: Fall of Cybertron, which put my heart and soul and tonsils and and uh, adenoids into uh, last year, uh, which is a a just uh, hit it out of the park game. Uh, it, I, I, I just felt uh, so fantastically honored to be back, uh, and and it's a it's a completely rage driven, Grimlock and sort of deeply darkly cinematically tortured character, a real different approach, uh, the same character through through like a different lens. Um, it's it's one of those franchises and fandom that has incredible versatility but even more so incredible uh, fan loyalty and fan participation just like or similar to the Star Wars franchise loyalty and and uh, fans are so vocal and so uh, just uh, uh, alive that uh, that have the ear of of Hasbro and they have the ear of the producers and they they really uh, there's there's been a lot of choices made based on fan demand it's 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 it has happened repeatedly and uh, it just continues to it just continues to amaze and I'm really sincerely grateful for your long time loyalty and I, I uh, I'm very sincere about that thanks Jim. thank you very much it's, it's an honor just to have you answer my question and go into detail with that and uh, uh, I look forward to your future work in Transformers Star Wars wherever you happen to land in the future for yeah well that said there's also something that every working actor will tell you and that's we li we live these days in the land of non-disclosure agreements for most or all of what we do now. Uh, even when we're working on things, nobody nobody can talk about what we're working on anymore. Uh, but but I, uh, I'm just I'm just adding that as as just uh, that that tends to come up over and over again at conventions. Even when you're doing things, you can't talk about what you're doing. But but uh, that's that's just a whole separate subject. So th thank you. Thank, for, thank you very very much for your call. I'll hand it back to Daniel. Thank you for joining hey, us, pleasure. Dan. And well, while we're waiting for our next callers, um, yes, um, if anybody in the chat is still wanting to call in, please. The lines are open now and. We'll be taking your calls, so please hit that call button and get your questions ready. Um, and I believe somebody's in the call with us now, so hello caller. 
Um, hello, my name is Caleb, and uh, I just wanted to um, say that uh, I have a question for you, Gray. You know, sure. You work for Team Rash. Sorry, I couldn't hear the question. Uh, you worked for King Rash, and you were like the uh, the tactical droid, uh, Kalani. Uh, like, you were made to replace the old tactical droid, and like, yours seemed more fierce, because in the end, you know, he shot uh, King Rash. So, uh, did you think that yours was more, um, like, uh, overall, did you think your tactical droid was more, uh, had a better battle strategy, or the original one? If, if any, I, there was a lot of static on the line. If anybody could hear that more clearly than I did. Uh, did you I, think your tactical droid was a better, like, a battle strategist or the uh, old ones that we saw in, like, season one to four? Or no, season, oh. yeah, season one. No question. <laughs> this, this is the state of the state. And not only that, but... Uh, it, it all had to do with, with decisiveness of, of action, and it had to do more with, uh, with uh, clarity of, of action and clarity of, of uh, just, just uh, through line. Uh, uh, there's, there's, there's really an unquestioning uh, it's it's the coldness with which he with which he carries out whatever whatever needs to be done gets done uh and there are no factors that interfere with with uh objectives it's it's strictly objective driven so yes they're the best of the best that's what makes them super tactical. And that's just an opinion. That's how I read it. Yeah, also, like, does some of the only droid uh, that works for the Separatists that I can actually take seriously after all the shenanigans that the other battle droids have? <laughs> the line is so filled with static that I'll just say uh, thank you. I, I, I'm having a very difficult time hearing. Yes, it seems to be. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was saying that the uh, the other battle droids, like, I can't really take them seriously after all the shenanigans. Uh, thank you so much for answering my question. My great pleasure. Thanks for calling. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. It's been an honor talking to you. So, um, the lanes are now open again for any, any um, callers that want to call in again. So, yeah, get your calling buttons ready and get your questions ready in the meantime we'll wait depending on what country you're calling from thanks for staying up or waking up early or staying up late or whatever it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely um i do believe uh yes we have a caller coming in just waiting um if, uh, there we go hello peter Hello. Hello, and your question? Oh, well, I kind of have just like one question here. Go ahead. Hi. I hope I hope I have one answer. <laughs> um, and that is, would you be like happy? Like, would you um, like in the future, do any works, uh, other works for Star Wars, or, like the Rebels or anything? I would be ecstatic, as I've always been ecstatic, to uh, join, rejoin, continue to join uh, Star Wars in any capacity uh, to con to that that they will have me in. Uh, I, my my association with them is uh, continues to be a highlight for me. Uh, so the the short answer is yes. The longer answer is uh, absolutely always and ever. Yeah. Hey, can I take a quick moment to uh, tell you about uh, my friend, my great friend? I did, in, in addition to stage and animation, I've, I've done a, a lot of television over the years and uh, s several uh, feature films. One of them is uh, a sci-fi cult 
uh, comedy called Spaced Invaders that was uh, directed by a, a longtime friend of mine named Patrick Reed Johnson. Uh, and he is finishing a film called 52577 with hyphens in the middle, 5 hyphen 25 hyphen 77. And that was the day that Star Wars was released. And it is an autobiographical film that he made about himself. Uh, and I've seen work prints of it. I've seen it uh, in a near finished version. It is a really wonderful film with a great big heart about um, the impact that that had on him, his life, his uh, life as a filmmaker. And uh, it's it's a really a beautiful effort. You, you, you can find him on Facebook, but he's, you can also find a, a related page on Facebook that's about the making of the film called Heart, uh, you can search it on Facebook, called Hearts of Dorkness, uh, D-O-R-K-N-E-S-S. -S. And uh, it all has to do with him and the effect uh, his chance meetings with uh, Spielberg and George Lucas and friends he made at Industrial Light and Magic, and uh, it, it's uh, he, he's he's another of my longtime uh, friends, and it it began when he cast me in this film, Spaced Invaders, which if you haven't seen it, is a really fun fun rental uh, at this point, or or you uh, you, you can find it in in uh, video stores I'm sure but um, Star Wars is still and has always been a very important part of his life I just wanted to throw that in while we were still talking well I'll, I'll definitely make sure to watch that yeah and take a look for Hearts of Dorkness also okay will do yeah so thank you for joining us Peter okay thank you bye thanks we have our next caller coming in. Um, just add him into the call. There we go. Hello, Rodrigo. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, Greg. What's up? Uh, hi. How you doing? I'm good. So, your so, question... Uh... Uh, I must say it's a great privilege to be here, and I, I'm thankful, uh, really, for this opportunity. So, um, can I get my questions here? Tremendous, sure. Uh, so, um, I have a few questions here. Um, the first one is, uh, what was what was the most amazing memory you have uh, of all the time you spent in the, the Clone Wars recording booth or room, I think? Wow, I guess... It was uh, the first time that uh, the first time I stepped up to the mic and Dave Filoni said, uh, I, I'm loving this. Uh, let's keep going in this direction. Wow. Uh, Sounds amazing. Uh, that's what that's what you dream of. That's what you wait for. Uh, uh -huh. You know that what you brought. You know that what you brought in is what everybody was waiting for. I have to tell you that, uh, although voice actors and especially in in uh, cartoon sessions in general, you you want to keep the atmosphere fun and festive and light. Uh. But when it's work time in the Clone Wars session room. You could hear a pin drop. That's how that's how high the level of concentration is. Even though there were probably ten actors in the room, the focus level is so high. It's Total, just yeah. it's it's electric, uh, and and it it's all about the work. And because and because uh -huh. we we were in a battle situation. It was even more so. It was it was it was a heightened, uh, just high urgency. All the marbles, uh, intense, intense silence in the room, and and mm -hmm. just just fantastic mutual respect of actor for actor, and, and nobody uh, 
nobody checking their messages and nobody doing anything else except lending to the energy in the room. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing, really. Uh, so um, I was uh, very uh, curious about um, something. You uh, you had a, a lot of uh, experience working in, in the Star Wars franchise before um, the the Clone Wars, but um, in when you were uh, in the first day of the first session, uh, did Dave give you uh, any information or talked with you uh, about uh, something related to Star Wars that you? Uh, didn't know besides, uh, you know, the the character and the story, you know, all of the the things and all around arc. I think. Did he did he give you any? No, I I think it was it, it was very uh, much specific and very much need to know. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything necessary to be in the moment and and stay in the moment. It was all. It was all uh, specific to exactly where we needed to be at that moment in the story. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's great to hear that. Uh, so, oh yeah, sure. Sorry to interrupt uh, you. <laughs> just, just specific, extremely specific. Mm -hmm. So, um, um, I think I have uh, one last question for you. Is it okay? Sure. Absolutely. Um, so, um, as a, a mo one of the most prolific voice actors, uh, what would be, uh, an, in your opinion, what would be the uh, most necessary characteristic that or aspect that someone must have to become uh, a voice actor? Someone that is uh, wanting to enter in the field of voice acting. I would say a uh, great great acting skills and ability to listen and uh, second to that is great improv skills which also involve ability to listen not that you can improvise with a script necessarily but you need to be able to create create a world for yourself inside your head uh, in the old days almost all recording was done ensemble with everybody in the room S much of what is done today is you'll find yourself alone in a recording studio and you have to create the entire world around you and the intensity and uh, anticipate responses around you all uh, by yourself I I wish it were still the other way it's become economically difficult to do it and also it uh, a lot of times has to do with convenience of a lot of times celebrity schedules, whatever, whatever it is, you have to have that ability and you have to be able, you have to be a really good uh, jump. You, you have to be able, if it's an episode of someone else's show, you have to be able to jump in and jump that rope as though you've been on that show for four years. No one can know that you're, that you're new to a show that you're joining you, and you've just got to, Buck up and and uh, step in, step in that room and step in that studio as though you've always been there and own it and and make it your own. Wow! Thanks for the fantastic answer. You're very welcome. Thanks for the question. So I, I think it's this is pretty much for my questions, and I I, I would like to thank you, Greg, for um, you know just. Um, Given your some time for uh, answering my questions, and uh, I would like to thank all the the Voice of the Republic uh, Krill for giving me this amazing opportunity. So thank you very much. Thank you for um, coming tonight, Rodrigo. So yeah, thank you. So again, the lines are open, and we've got our next caller. That was fast. <laughs> so hello, Stephen. Hello. So nice to meet you guys. So nice. your question? Yeah. Um, I just want to say, Greg, I want to thank you for all the work you've done for the voiceover community as like a fan of voiceover actors and a great admirer of them. I think you guys do great work. I think you guys are very, very much underappreciated. And you definitely need to be appreciated more. You're the young son heroes of voice acting. I think and, I'm speaking. Uh, I think I'm speaking for everyone when I say our pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so my first question would be, uh, 
When it comes to a character, how do you approach them when it comes to finding their right voice, and how do you know when you found the position? Uh, I think I think it's an acting class answer, and that's when you find the character, the voice will follow. Once you really do the homework and figure out who it is, you know you know what they sound like. Um, I think that's always true, and it and uh, once you get inside the head of that character, uh, it it it's sort of becomes evident. And a lot of times those clues, I talked about this earlier, will be furnished to you by the artist and whether, the, you know, the teeth are sticking out or whether the well, whether the nose appears to be a little adenoidal or, you know, those are those are things that you get along the way. Now, if the characters are a little miserly and have a little, uh, <laughs> a little asthmatic <laughs> and can't breathe too well. <laughs> when someone's recovering from a cop, that's very, that's very accurate. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just trying to add it. So then, <laughs> then you can start to play what it is. Now, it sounds like someone's playing basketball with a metal basketball. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's really true. There's some very funny extraneous noise but uh, uh anyway uh the the answer to the question is you just keep adding elements and then just kind of play what if uh and along the way you you discover things you know with with grimlock and transformers for the first month of the show and that was one of those things where the agent the, actually the the casting director and the director of the show uh, called and said, I have good news and bad news. You got the job. Are you sure you can vocally sustain this character? I said, well, I guess I better. And, uh, but I was, I was kind of with my hands restricting my jaw and trying to hinge myself and hold, uh, hold I was trying to create a mechanized me. Uh, and at this, at the same time, almost give myself a tonsillectomy every time I got in the booth. But uh, the voice is, the voice is is a muscle, and uh, it gets stronger when you use it correctly and and uh, ask it to do things. Uh, you, you get better, you get stronger, you get more versatile. You, if if it's the career that you choose, then you're obliged to uh, treat treat your voice with respect, but at the same time, ask it to do the things that you need it to do, and. Um, all of that comes into play when you're choosing a character and making sure that should you be fortunate enough to be cast in that character, that you have the chops to sustain the choices that you've made. And not not by cheating it, you got to go full out every time you go and make sure that you do something that's memorable enough to, to uh, make sure that they oh, know that's that really... you, make sure that they know that you were there. Oh, that's very, very interesting here, and thanks for that. Uh, my second question would be, uh, who was the most difficult character you probably voiced if, you had, if there was any? Say again? Who was the most difficult character you probably had trouble voicing if you did have any trouble? Well, most, well I, 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 I would say a sustained character would be Grimlock from Transformers, but every... Every Call of Duty game, every every war game, every interactive game where I'm asked to uh, have the eventuality of, of have die because since it's interactive gaming, I have the eventuality of dying probably 50 different ways, including falling off of cliffs of all different heights, uh, falling off of cliffs uh, having been, uh, you know, speared or 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 on fire or uh whatever you can imagine and all of it requires uh screaming my guts out and and covering that and covering it again and doing it multiple times multiple ways and uh war games are full out screaming for a period of hours and you can't really uh fake it or it doesn't ring true so so they Interact. The, uh, the answer to the question is interactive gaming in general. 
uh, if it's if it's involves screaming is the most the most demanding. Even if you don't have a character's name, even if you're soldier number four and it's a heavy duty screaming, everything you're doing within the game involves screaming is going to be uh, incredibly vocally demanding. Those are things you have to prepare yourself for. Uh, but again, you it, you almost hurt your voice more trying to fake it than you do by just going full out, but being being aware that you have to sort of protect yourself at the same time. That's very That's, interesting here. That's it's, correct. It's kind of uh, an unful, unfulfilling answer, but it's 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 the truth. It's, no, it's not. No, it's fine. It's it's a great answer. I understand totally. And my third and last question would be, uh, what is your thoughts on how celebrity voice acting, how they started to become more prominent now, and particularly the animated developments that are really just casted for their name and marketability, but they're very rarely right for the role. Do you feel they're kind of taking away jobs from voice actors to some degree? Well, I think you answered your own question if uh, with the with the words, but they're not quite right for the role. I think it's a casting dilemma. I've, I answer this different. Uh, there's a lot of people, I do a lot of convention work and it always comes up in panels and as soon as you said not quite right for the role that that's the key words for me it's a casting dilemma if a, if a celebrity is absolutely perfect for the visual image that they're marrying the voice to then so be it and that's a good casting choice if yeah. it's just a right. question of a producer being able to call and say uh, we're the whole company sitting at lunch. You won't believe who I'm sitting across the table from. Um, and then hands the phone and says, you know, whoever the celebrity is, say hello to my son Timmy. That's a really bad reason, and that should that shouldn't happen. It's a casting dilemma. If it's the perfect voice for the perfect part, then so be it. Then then that's good casting. If it's if it's the wrong voice for the wrong image, that's bad casting. I, I do under, I do understand that, that there's a, a big uh, incentive as far as publicity uh, for for casting a celebrity because of all the outlets of talk shows and and uh, um, you know all of those entertainment show outlets where you get your movie mentioned uh, by a celebrity. I agree. So I, uh, I, un I understand it financially. I do too. It comes down to, to did, did you really cast the best person for the part? I agree. Uh, it's for, it's it, Honestly, I think the best casting of celebrity kind of people were the cast of Batman in the animated series where people, yeah, people like Mark Hamill and Richard Mall and Paul Williams and Michael and Sarah all of them absolutely really well. I there think you go. Are Andrew and Romano. So, Agreed. Uh, I just want to say thank you very much for all the questions you've answered. You were you're fantastic and fascinating to listen to. And, well, I, I'm, I'm thankful to Rory and Daniel and Graham and Liz to letting me be here. And just great work in the future. So I really look forward to all the work you do. Thank you. Well said. Thanks, Stephen. Well, thank you no for joining us. Bye bye. Oh, so yeah, so we have a few more questions before we shut the lines, and these questions are being sent in. Um, so the first one is from Tim Vickhoven, who says, Did anybody tell Mr. Berger about the background and history of Onderon in the Star Wars comics before he did the role? Um, brief, briefly. Uh, the they they brought me up to speed on on exactly where where I came in, uh, uh, so I had I had the information I needed to enter the story. Awesome. And our last questions for tonight come from Dan Grievous, and his first one. Is, did you like the droid general's design and would you place him alongside other Star Wars icons in terms of design? I think the design is absolutely awesome. I think it's it's essentially pure function, which is what I think uh, defines that super tactical droid. Uh, I think it's... Uh, 
I think he's a lean, mean fighting machine. I think, I think the design is cold and menacing and frightening and uh, uh, sobering and absolute cut to the chase. Uh, this guy means business. Definitely. And his second question is, which is your favorite Star Wars faction? Rebels, Empire, Jedi, Republic, and so on. Who do you root for? Who do I root for? Yes. Anakin. <laughs> so the Jedi. Well, Jedi and then Sith, sort of, but... <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I. I mean, I, I. I say. I just. I'm sorry. I'm a. I. 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 Uh, I pull for the good guys. Yeah. <laughs> I, I forget. I forget. I. I tend to forget that not everybody does. Uh, yes. Each. I like. I like. I like happy endings, and I like uh, the good guys to win. <laughs> and I hope. And I hope in the. I hope in the. Uh, seesaw between. Uh, between the dark side and the other side that uh, the good guys win in the end. I, I, I like to believe that. <laughs> and his final question is, if you could go back and revoice Kalani, which of your previous characters voice would you put in Kalani's mouth? Grimlock, Cormed Pig, Mysterio or others? Well, uh, hopefully I can choose the voice that I did used because I think I, I think I hit that particular nail on the head. <clears throat> but if I, if push came to shove, if I had to, I would say, uh, mis my Mysterio from Spider-Man would probably be the next best choice unless you wanted to turn a serious story into a comedy. Uh, I, I, I'm, it's, it's like gold. It, you, the porridge has to be just right. The Kalani, the Kalani voice that's there is the right, that porridge is just right. None of the other porridges you mentioned are just right. They're too hot or too cold. They're too strong or too weak or too mysterious or too aggressive or too the the whole point and what dave pointed out in session and what he loved was that it was cold and dispassionate it was it was that absence of aggression it, it was powerful without being without being overly there, it wasn't that it was angry. It just was. It just, he loved, he, he, he liked that and complimented that. He thought that's where the power was. And um, I'm real happy with what's there. Please don't make me put anything else in that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so thank you for answering all these questions and we're going to shut the line now to live callers sorry if you haven't got your question in but it's all we've got time for unfortunately yeah. and I, I, have, I hear Rory sneaking into the into the call so let's see what he's got to say yeah. I, I just want to say you know it, it's just so weird like this is actually to me before like uh, one time I inter we interviewed a member of the Clone Wars voice cast here and like back October, November when we were first signed a podcast, Zach Hanks who voiced Gernak and I was like, oh yeah, he was in the Clone Wars, that's great. Like five or six months later, I do some research on Zach Hanks, I found out he's in another of my favorite franchises and I like freak out so badly. <laughs> I actually have to confess, one of the listeners were giving their questions. I was reading through your complete list because you mentioned Call of Duty. Uh, the original Call of Duty is my favorite of the series. I've been a huge fan of them forever. And I kid you not, I was reading through your list and you voiced my favorite character in those originals, didn't you? Sergeant Moody. You were him. That's what it says on your credits. Right. 
Yeah, oh, Sergeant Moody, I can't believe it. I only just found out you voiced him. That is crazy. If yep. I had known, yeah, if I had known before, I probably would have freaked out even more. But wow, I, I can't actually believe that. I've done many, many interactive video games. More, more recently, uh, Harley the Medic in Resident Evil uh, Raccoon City, uh, Guild Wars 2. I'm Conrad and Dugadoo the Quag, and, and um, let's see. Oh, there's a lot. I'm Sir Jack on Final Fantasy, and I'm Eeyore on Kingdom Hearts too. And um, boy, uh, go to. I'll tell what. Uh, I, I'm Sir. I am Jack. Want to play Blitzball? Somebody had to teach that boy to be a man. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, everybody, uh, here's here's what has to happen. Everybody go to imdb.com and enter my name, G-R-E-G-G-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E 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 I go there to find out what I've done. Uh, they know more about what I've done than I do. Uh, <laughs> It's it, it's a very it's a very complete listing of my credits, and happily there are many. Um, <laughs> brutal well, legend, brutal legend. Yeah. I was rat gut. Uh, I told you Transformers: Fall of Cybertron. I was Grimlock. Um, there there are, uh, are many 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 many. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, I'm the pain. Bees! Nice. Yeah, oh, I, do. I told you, I only go where I'm invited. That's where we began <laughs> this. So, yeah. happily, ha happily, I, happily, I get invited a lot. Yeah, that's nice. Like, I just... I just won't be able to get over that now. The fact that I was speaking to Sergeant Moody this whole time, <laughs> and I only realized at the end, I'm like, oh, wow. We, 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 wouldn't heard, we wouldn't have heard the end of it if you had found out at the very <laughs> beginning. We, or, and, or if I found out afterwards, that would be even worse. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Greg, it's been an absolute pleasure having you Definitely. join us on the podcast. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having. I actually learned some things just answering questions. And that's that's, good. that's 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 fun part about being a teacher. Actually, it's one of the things I enjoy most about uh, conventions now is there there are always panels. They always tend to be question driven, and just by answering other people's questions. Sometimes you learn things about yourself uh, that you hadn't thought about because they're questions that you hadn't asked yourself. So I, I enjoy I enjoy question and answer format. Wonderful. I wish you every success uh, with podcast, and I thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Thank you. Thank Cheers. you so much. And Skype is the most amazing invention of the <laughs> Absolutely. We, 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 are, we are an ocean or two apart right now, are we not? Yeah, probably. Yes. <laughs> Looks like. Yeah. Well, well, Dan, Daniel's in the in England, myself and Graham in Ireland, and Lizzie keeps changing positions. So I know <laughs> I. I'm on holiday in Colorado right now, so I'm probably a bit closer Still? to. Uh, yeah, uh, shut up. <laughs> I'm, I'm, still, I'm still here till Wednesday. No, really? <laughs> oh, then I get two weeks of jet lag. Lovely. That sounds fine. <laughs> um, I, think you, I think you should just tell them you're in an undisclosed location. Absolutely. Perfect. Well, that's what I was thinking for most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden in a warehouse somewhere, just doing random... I, I could be on Cato Nemoidia for all you know. No, how did I know? Yes, how did I know? <laughs> it, it was coming. It, it, it was coming. Well, Very... right into that one, mate. 
actually. I think it was Daniel who spoke before me, so it wasn't me. Yes. Well, by proxy, you, you, walked, you walked into it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yes, yeah. let's move forward. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Greg, thanks so much for joining us, and we look forward to inviting you on the podcast again at some other point. All right. And well, cheers, all. Thanks. Thank you so much for having me. See ya. Bye. 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 Yeah, so Greg wins the award of the most callers. <laughs> <laughs> Rory, I, I have to say, when, when you said that you didn't know you'd been talking to, what, what, did you, what did you say his name was? Like Captain Moody or something? Moody. Well, uh, or Moody. Captain Sergeant Moody. Sergeant Moody. Uh, oh, sorry. Or... I, 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 when, you, when you said that, it just got me thinking of something that happened the other day. Um... <laughs> those of you, no, it's quick, I promise. Uh, those of you who have been following my Facebook um, probably saw 157,000 posts about Amnesia, a Machine for Pigs, which is the sequel to what is arguably the scariest game ever made, and I've been waiting it for uh, bleh, I've been waiting for it for two and a half years. Um, I watched it all in one night. Unfortunately, I can't play it because I'm on a four-year-old laptop. Um, but the main character throughout the whole game, I was, I, I kept thinking, why do I like this guy's voice so much? It's such a brilliant voice. And as the credits were rolling, the actor was Toby Longworth, who voiced Lot Dodd. And I, wow. I swear, I had a two-hour-long fangasm <laughs> because I had been listening to Lot Dodd the entire time, and I didn't realise it. <laughs> that is actually pretty damn crazy. Oh, yes. Wow. Well, if she, if she, yes. again, if she'd found out at the beginning, she, anybody in the room would have never heard the end of it. No, absolutely not. Wow. Start screaming and the glass starts to crack. Yeah. Wow, Sergeant Moody. Unless you can learn to spread wings and learn to fly, then we have to drive private. Uh, We're almost at wow. an hour and a half into her show. Wow. And we have topics to cover i think we do <laughs> i just get them all no I'm kidding um <laughs> but yes <laughs> but yes um our first topic tonight is the news that there will be more star wars rebels news at new york comic con in october and also the recent is anyone willing to play is anyone willing to pay for my flight uh no <laughs> no unless they take monopoly money <laughs> i think that's acceptable for me anyway in that case wait a second i'll just go down to the monopoly bank yay <laughs> 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 but yes, um, and also the confirmation of the Star Wars Rebels books coming out for kids. I, I guarantee not just only kids will buy that. Well, I, 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 guarantee, I, I guarantee you that people will buy them thinking there'll be Rebels news in there, you know, yeah. Rebels news news. I guarantee you people will buy it for that. Definitely. I find it I find it slightly strange, uh, rather a slightly strange thing to release so early on. But like Ruri just said, I, I have my doubts that it'll be anything truly significant. I mean, for, yeah. all, for, for well, all we know, it might it, just be an illustrated children's version of one of the novels, or perhaps, perhaps even you know, leading up to Episode Four. Uh, uh, you know, what what's already common knowledge throughout the fandom. Yeah. Possibly. Well, the. The books are confirmed to be coming out next August, though, so I'll tie oh. in. Oh, that I didn't see. Oh, well, maybe, yeah. maybe there'll be some sort of um, link. Yeah, yeah. but I, I, I'm looking forward to the um, new uh, stuff shown at New York Comic Con, Definitely. if there is a new, but come on, New York Comic Con, New Rebels, <laughs> anyone else get a connection? Yeah, that was a bad one. I'll, I'll pretend that never happened. Um, we heard but nothing. One thing, yeah, one thing I will admit though that I'm not kind of happy about. Um, and I'm no, who bothered it is uh, probably the staff at Stories.com. But what actually ticked me off was almost most of it. Well, around a half of the text promoting the Rebels panel. It was almost in for that. 
that much copied from the celebration year announcement for Rebels. I mean, no joke, almost word for word, except for a few obvious change words like CE2 for NYCC, and yeah. then New Earth instead of First Look or New Development or whatever it was. I mean, mostly it was word for word. That, that wasn't really that good, you know, a bit lazy there. Yeah, mm. I mean, as long as we do get some new concepts, I'm happy. Because, I mean, Graham, the concepts we saw at Celebration were pretty damn cool, weren't they? Yeah, yeah they were pretty cool. Definitely. They were cool. They were, they were uh... So all three of you went to Celebration uh... Europe? No, no. Dan, we left Daniel behind. Uh, right. Yes, I... right, right, I don't yeah, feel quite so lonely. I, I was rocking in the corner, just sobbing. <laughs> 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 uh, slow well, down, so we had to put it on and run for it. So yeah. yeah. Well, Daniel <laughs> was meant was meant to go originally, and then he couldn't. Yeah. Basically. Back me up. Yeah, back me up on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll back you up. On that. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I'm, I'm hope uh, one thing Daniel, I can't. Daniel, you don't want that right now. Huh? Hey, hey, Daniel, what I'm looking at right now, all the stuff that I got from Celebration Europe too. <laughs> That, 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 that's it. This time, this time I'm going to get the chainsaw and come round yours. Wait a second. Oh, dude, I'm the master of chainsaw. You know I'm the master of chainsaw. You can't you can't chainsaw the master of chainsaw. Well, one thing that I was kind of disappointed with set of these, you know, two concepts, I was at least hoping that they'd show a concept for why the main characters are new, so to speak. So I'm hoping that they will at New York Comic Con for those. Because, let's face it, as good as the concepts were, it was mainly original trilogy stuff in animated style and a new ship, the Ghost. I mean, they were really cool, but, you know, always good to see a new main character, isn't it? Unless they look like a yeah. three-eyed girl man. <laughs> I, I, I take it you don't like, um, what are they called from Malister? Um, Grands. No, I like Grand, but they don't look like beetles. They don't have the body of a beetle. <laughs> Fair but, enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the concepts of Salvation were just pure amazing. Though the Stormtrooper looked great. The Star Destroyer, Graham. I think the biggest cheers at for the Rebels panel where it was when the Star Destroyer was shown, wasn't there? I mean. Yeah, that was just that was awesome. I think it was the Y wing they showed, didn't they? No, they didn't show a Y wing. Sh it was a oh no, they they showed they showed a Tie Fighter or something like that. They showed they showed yeah. one of the fighters. In the yeah, yeah, which we'd already gotten a hint of in the actual Rebels announcement video, like two or three months before. But yeah, it's still a good impress. Yeah, let me think of what they showed. They showed. The interior of a hallway, like a Star Destroyer, a Star type hallway, uh, concept for a protocol droid, one for an astronaut droid with three legs, um, Stormtrooper, TIE Fighter, Star Destroyer, even actually another Star Destroyer one was actually, this was very interesting when they showed another Star Destroyer, but thing like but shit told us actually and even i i have to admit i didn't know this before him, but the star destroyers and empire and return of jedi are different to the ones in the new hope there's a different slope design on the top and dave filoni was talking about the differences and that at the start they'll be using the new hope ones obviously because of the timeline yeah mm -hmm. and that was cool and then of course yeah, and then of course they ended with the ghost showing the concept for that, and that looked great. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping for some new concepts. I mean, I think it's safe to say for all of us, we'll be really, uh, we'll feel really cheaped if what they really show is the celebration concepts all over again. I mean, that would be really cheating. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I don't think they'd stoop that though, would they? Yeah. Yeah, because in, in, in the announcement for the New York Comic panel, they did specifically say new art. Just depends how new it is for some, you know. Mm. Yeah. 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 I or mean, they might, just, uh, they might just go the chief route and say, oh, yeah, you, you know, you guys that didn't make it to Dublin, yeah, that, that, right. that didn't make it to it's freaking uh, yeah. Celebration Europe. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing as well. Even like one or two weeks before we ended up this celebration, I was talking to people 
in the U.S. Well, I won't specifically say the U.S., but you know, elsewhere in the world who aren't going to weren't going to celebration Europe, and they didn't have any idea that the first rebels showing you know, concepts and all that would be at celebration Europe. They were all like, "Wait, what are you talking about?" And I had to show them the link on the celebration website, and then they were like, "Oh, I didn't know that." <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> It was pretty big news on the day Rebels was announced. Uh, but yeah, uh, but uh, are you all hoping for a new concept at a new Carcon panel for Rebels? And what are you hoping gets a concept specifically? Um, I'm, I'm hoping, like you were saying earlier, concept of the main character, or like, um, or just yeah, just just a main character in general would be great. And maybe some uh, maybe some scenery pictures like of some of the uh, some of the planets they'll be using that'd be pretty cool. But other than that, you know, uh, it's kind of just anticipating the show. Yeah. Mm. What about you, what about you, Lizzie? Um, <clears throat> I I feel slightly like I'm blaspheming saying this, but <laughs> I have to be brutally honest that the idea of rebels hasn't really excited me the same way as Clone Wars did. I mean, it could be perhaps that it's just, it's an era that I'm not as familiar with, that I don't know as much about, or even, you know, perhaps even feel as comfortable with. Um, so I haven't paid much attention to rumors or to spoilers or to any announcements or anything. I, I also, not, not only because I'm not quite as interested, no, it's not that I'm not interested, it's that, again, it just doesn't excite me quite as much, but not only that, but also because um, I'm still going to see it, but I want to go into it blind. I don't want to have any expectations. Now, I, I realize, that, you know, doing, you. The, doing the podcast and, you know, being part of the Star Wars <laughs> community as a whole, that's going to be, you know, difficult to, to stay completely spoiler free. But... Um, I mean, you know, I, I can see the pictures, but I don't necessarily have to watch any videos that they release. I don't necessarily have to read the news. I mean, I'm going to come across things anyway. Um, anyway, I mean, t to answer your question, um, I, I would like to see Vale. You're going to laugh, but she was a Nemoidian pilot that was in uh, an expanded universe uh, novel, I believe. I cannot remember which one. Um, she ended up dying, um, but and, and and she and she does actually come further down the line. But it would be interesting to see her or a similar character, perhaps Mouse, who was a Duros, um, appear in the Rebels series. Either way, something something other than the standard human or Wookiee or, or even Togruta or even Twi'lek, you know, in in the main character set, or you know, not even as a main character, but as a major character. Um, again, something like maybe a Duros or a Trandoshan, something along those lines is what I would like most to see. How about you, Daniel? Sorry, I just back from the airport. They didn't let me take a chainsaw through it. Um, but yeah, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it, it would be good to see what they show and again, what the characters will be like and all that. How is that giving Sorry, I just have this image in my head of Daniel going, trying to go through customs with a chainsaw, <laughs> just being turned around. It's <laughs> like, no. Oh. <laughs> Let me throw all the Mr. Loch Ness monster on you. <laughs> Daniel, that is Scottish, right? Yeah. <laughs> Daniel, that is Scottish, isn't that? Yes, you're lucky. There. Please tell me that's yes, Scottish. You're, you're lucky there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Daniel. Watch that. You know Watch it. Oh, Customs, man. Daniel's gonna set the Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> hey, Daniel. You know what's mounted above my Xbox games at the moment? <laughs> the, the Black Series stuff that I got from uh, Celebration Europe. Right, I'm gonna, I'm, 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 gonna yeah. I'm gonna try the fairy terminal this time. <laughs> if Graham ends up dead tomorrow, I, I, I think we'll know what happened. Okay, uh, Lizzie, if you heard any of the ex-wife jokes I might have mentioned at any point, <laughs> oh no, keep it, Daniel, you'd know. Remember, this is PG. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh well. Uh, 
but yeah, anyone want to move on before someone is seriously disturbed? Yes, and before I consider okay. going to the ferry terminal. Um, so our next topic, <laughs> our next topic, Rory will love this one. Um, what is the confirmation what? of the what? next Star Wars convention in Ireland? Invasion Belfast. Yes. Sex. Oh yeah, I didn't see that. Invasion to be precise, sex. sex. So, sorry, sorry, we've got a badass. Um, <laughs> yeah, sex. Yeah, sex. So they um. One month exactly after they teased it, certainly took the ammo garrison long enough, didn't they? What? <laughs> I think then it's just... <laughs> he, he saw me standing out no, the window with the chainsaw. My, my speaker's cut. Dad, trying to listen, Graham. Speak. What have you spoken to? I get My speaker cut out, I can't hear any of that. <laughs> 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 so anyway, Invasion uh, 6 only took the ammo garrison one month after initially teasing on their page to announce it. Well, it certainly well, it was certainly worth the wait, I'd say, to get an announcement. And it doesn't clash with yeah. Star Wars fan of fun. Yeah, I'm not too I'm not too excited for it. I'm not gonna lie, I mean I don't know, just better stuff coming out this year. Nothing celebration so. after a celebration Europe, nothing's yeah. worth it to him. Yeah, Daniel, once you experience celebration Europe too, you know, there's just no going back to it or anything else. <laughs> What's that little pathetic thing? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm excited for Invasion Belfast. I mean, not as excited as I was when they teased an Invasion announcement because let's face it, you wait a month for the official announcement after they tease it, yeah, there was a lot of excitement. Um, it's, I think the dates are a bit interesting because, after all, um, the Invasion Belfast, usually in October, the Dublin ones uh, that Graham would get more excited about are uh, earlier in the year, in around May, or well, around Easter anyway, springtime, etc. Um, and Belfast ones later in the year, this time. Looks like it'll be vice versa because we know a Dublin one's coming in next year, but just hasn't has its hasn't had its dates now. But yeah. I'm interested to see how Camel Garrison can improve on. I mean, even though I didn't hate it, the Invasion Belfast I did go to five last year. It was probably the least bit my least favorite convention of all that I attended. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's no way they can make it much worse. Um, uh, but I'm hoping they can make it better. I mean, well, I mean, the simple fact is when this convention organizer um, says it's going to be their biggest, best show and most spectacular yet, you're going to hold them to that. So if it's not, well, I'll let them know. <laughs> and I can't wait to do that. Um, and yeah, then it's in Bells. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, until the double ones came along, the Belfast ones were pretty big. I mean, Graham, I told you about the fact they had Dave Chris, Kenny Baker, and Jeremy Bullock all at one show on the same days. I mean, that's pretty big. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember you saying that. What? You don't remember yeah, me saying that? I remember, you, say oh, yeah, I remember you were saying that. They, had, they were all in the one convention together. That was pretty cool, but still... Uh, I'm not. I'm not bothered traveling all the way up north just to go to something for like two days. Where at least where it was, you know, for celebration that was a different story. That was a going abroad and b it was going to a celebration rather than a small invasion. I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna go all the way up north for a couple of days just to go to a tiny little invasion. <laughs> in uh, well, I have accommodation. I think it just depends He's... if I'm allowed. <laughs> He, he's so he's so um, yeah, yeah. criticizing, isn't he, Rory? <laughs> the same can be said <laughs> for you. Really. And then go home. The same can be said for me. Yet yeah, the biggest convention I've been to, is Star Wars Fan Fun Day. Well, you didn't want to travel to Milton Keynes, did you? It's not. I didn't want to travel. It's the money. That's two different things. I know, I'm just teasing you, Dan, I'm just teasing you. That will be two dead yeah. in the morning. <clears throat> Good luck yeah, with Daniel, that. Again, two for the price of one, and I get a free trip to Ireland, yay. 
I'm not sure it'll be free at anything. Well, if I can't get through security, I'm just going to have to use the chainsaw, you know. Um. Okay, so Daniel, Daniel, statement. You have one chainsaw. How many do you think I have? Uh, okay, I've not got enough fingers to count. <laughs> you, but you're especially not after he's taken a the chainsaw to them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yeah. So next topic. <laughs> I I I'd still like to say some more invasion Belfast, then we can move on. Not that easy, Graham. It's not that yeah. easy. <laughs> yeah, my shape for nine. I want to go there. I I must get there, and I must see guest announcements very quickly. I will invite you there with the monopoly money I've got. <laughs> I if there's an Avoidian act, I will be there faster than you can say Trade Federation or something. Trade Federation? Oh, wow. well, they didn't announce one, did they? <laughs> they had Jerome Blake last year. He's named Moidian, isn't he? Yes, yeah, I met, he is. Cel- I, met, I met him at Celebration 4. I got a hug from him, actually. Oh, God. He gave, he, gave, he gave me a hug and a free autograph. And a restraining order? No, I'm not a restraining order. I was bloody 15. Uh, it doesn't mean you can't get a restraining order. Not only that, but I was in a completely different country than him at the time. That's when I was still living in the States. It still doesn't... No excuse. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> Which means she probably does have one anyway. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I I want I want those guest announcements now. That's all I'm saying. I mean, they have connections. Use them. Actually, <laughs> I did see, I did see that Tim Dry, who was our celebration up, who played Two Face and among Calamari in Return of the Jedi, he posted on the Emerald Garrison's page, saying uh, reminding them of their convention. They invited them to an island, so. Uh-huh. He could be there. That's something. Yeah. God, at this rate, I'll be meeting Tim Joy so much. So a good few times next year. He's gonna. He might be invasion. He'll be sick uh, of if you. they do invite him. Yeah, <laughs> probably. <laughs> and then he, and then Neil. It's supposed to be very dry by the end of it. But I'm full. And then Neil from the Star Wars fan fund. They told me his. One confirmed guest so far is Tim Dry, Yay. so definitely. Anyway, well, yeah. Let me put that down so to, my, to get autograph lists at Fan Fundy. Let me write that down. Yeah, we'll they announced other guests. Tim Dry. There we go. Have they announced other guests? Like, one, do you want autographs for more? I didn't. From more, I should. I didn't say I was going to get them all on the list. <laughs> <laughs> then why list? So, uh, forget it. Yeah, please do. Yes. Moving on. Moving on to our next topic of the night is um discussing the news that that upcoming Star Wars spin-off movies will be origin story films. Um uh... Well I'm I'm very apprehensive about this. Um because we all know that Disney is going to do whatever the bloody hell it wants to do. And I'm very, very nervous that it's going to absolutely smash canon into little pieces. Not only that, but these are these are filler films. These are just that they're one offs. They're, you know, what? who's to say that they're not going to be the biggest piece of crap this side of Battlefield Earth. Okay. I mean, quality, quality, <laughs> not quantity. I mean, do we really yeah. need them? Okay. Well, it, it, it depends. I mean, yeah, I, I, I will admit, I, when I heard origin story, origin, I was just like, yeah, not quite what I was hoping for. I mean, the spell films, if used correctly, I think could be useful, but... Yeah, origin stories, I'm not convinced. Yeah, I don't think that was a good step. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's just... Uh, and not, not only that, but if they're musicals, I will literally become murderous. 
I will, I will commit suicide. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> That's kind of worrying. Hate, ha hate yeah, everyone. Yeah, they're going into Disney, no high school, no high school musical in Star Wars. I'm sure. Signed Lizzie. I'm sure. I'm sure Graham will lend you a couple of chainsaws. Chain, chain yes, please. Oh. Uh, yeah, I can also spare you a couple of uh, tasers, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I can spare you a couple. Of, uh, I think I've got a couple of fire extinguishers that are actually filled with gasoline from my old Joker days. So yeah, you know. What? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> That's what we get discussing origin films. We get the origins of Graham being a weirdo. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, or a, or a, sec or, or a, or a, a psychopathic powerful. murderer. Yeah, there you go. That's the one. Ever seen American Psycho? <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, in this case, it's the I tried reading that. I quit after about 10 minutes. Loosely based off my life. <laughs> <laughs> Only you're not American. <laughs> I said loosely. <laughs> oh, my <God. laughs> oh my god, what's happened to us tonight? I don't want... Yeah, I'm trying to discuss things per properly and then... Wow. Right, yeah. series two album had four hits. See, this is, this is the first time we've had Graham on and... God knows how long, and this is what's happened. Yeah. <laughs> it's Tom Kane, even the first episode yeah. of Tom Kane. Tom. That was only last. That was like in the mid Brady episode. For people who don't remember Graham, what I'm kidding. <laughs> this is what you get when all the psychoticness, uh, the psychotic activity builds up. I'm sure some of your fan this... base remember you. <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm waiting for an answer, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> uh, give me some spin-off films that tie up loose ends in the clone or it's like Maul or if the Boba Fett doesn't ha found the Ozark doesn't happen in the first content give us that as a movie yeah but I you know origin stories uh, I'm leaning towards no I mean obviously final product decides it but yeah yeah as long as it's not like as long as it's not a musical, as Lizzie said, I'll be happy. I, I just can't imagine Yoda, like, dancing and singing. Oh, gosh, no. We already it's had kind of of spoiler. No, 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 no. Just, no, Dan, why? Seriously, wh why? I, d I don't Beautiful. think we need that image in our heads. I'll leave it there with I mean, you. It's fine. It's bad enough we have the image of Han Solo dancing from Star Wars Connect printed in our heads. I mean, Yoda. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Please help us, someone. Hmm, dance and shout. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Feel the ropes I do in my feet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my DJ, drop a beat. <laughs> Can we move on? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I don't think there's any moving on from this next. <laughs> so our next... I don't think we've ever devolved quite this much. Our next topic of the night is discussing the rumour <laughs> that the Santa Monica facility is being updated for episode yeah, 7. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about it? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I need a minute. Yeah, go, go out and drink some whiskey, whatever it is you drink. Um, yeah, uh, it is interesting. I mean, I hope it is just for post-production because we know J.J. Abrams has uh, complained about the fact they want to film episode seven in the UK. Um, uh, first of all, problems. Um <laughs> But, yeah, it, I mean, it would be good if they used it for post-production, but, yeah, I mean, it would be closer to home for JJ. I mean, if, if really necessary slash need be, he could just be there for the post-production, but, you know, who knows? Like I said, first world problems, JJ. Yeah. Definitely. What do you think, Lizzie? <laughs> um... I hate to say it, I don't know how much of an opinion I really have on this. Um, Burn. 
that there's a part of me that is still sort of raging about the idea that again Disney has Star Wars and they're touching the saga they're expanding it they're adding another film when for me Star Wars as a film is a done deal it's a six film masterpiece leave it the, leave it alone so I don't know and not only that but again I hate to say it but I, I don't know too much about the, like these filming locations um, or you know even methods of filming and, and what they really mean sorry and, and, and yet you'd be perfectly fine if like the next movies were based on name audience I guarantee you that <laughs> yes, but the chances of that happening are about the same chances of Newt Gunray becoming a porn star. <laughs> so I'm sorry, it's the first thing I didn't think of. Gunray. <laughs> well, Lizzie, that I think I'll have to list that as an idea for the three D animation just to prove you wrong. Oh my god. <laughs> Hang on, wait, 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 wait. You're suggesting Newt Gunray is a porn star in three D? Wasn't I don't know. Yeah. I okay, so Mr. Gunray, you're going to have to I sign really here don't... to that you're over 18. <laughs> I really don't know if I want to see that. Well, you just said you want. You just said you want to, to kind of. <laughs> yeah, you not. Finish. Well, you. I said the chances of that happening are the same as. Well, I don't know. You do seem to have a very, star. very what big obsession with the moisture. You, you wouldn't have mentioned that if you didn't want it. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't want to see episode seven, but we've been talking about I, that for the last. I, 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 I apologize to our live viewers about this porn star situation. I don't. <laughs> Next time I think of some, I'll think yeah. of something better. We know, Graham. Yes. We know you, you don't mind about anything, but... <laughs> and, and an hour and a half, I don't think so. I think we've been talking about less about episode seven. Yeah, I think, I have to be honest, did we even mention episode seven? I can never tell. We just did. What? We just did mention really? it there. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> oh yeah, I was talking, I was talking about JJ Abrams and first world problems. Yeah, now I remember. Okay. Well done. Yes, thank you. Round of applause. Uh, the last topic, please. And our last topic of the night is discussing the rumor that Star Wars Episode Seven will be tied to the new dawn. Now, before I continue, all day I've been thinking it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new. <laughs> <laughs> That's what been, since I saw that, that's just what I've been thinking, that song. Oh, imagine if they Const- took that as the uh, main theme instead of the Star Wars theme. <laughs> I've heard that they did. I, no, I don't want to think of it, but please, no. Uh, that's, that's part of the musical. <laughs> like, uh, uh, hey, Luke, how are you feeling today? Well, Han, it's a new day. <laughs> this is back to my ears. The Empire is gone. <laughs> And I'm feeling good. <laughs> oh, I'm losing the will to live. I don't blame I think so. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't blame any of you. I think I'm the only one in here who's actually totally okay right now. <laughs> How can you call yourself okay? And this explains a lot. Simple. I, I actually, is, I'm not going to lie, I've been playing Xbox this entire time we were talking. Oh, now the truth comes out. Yeah, I've actually been speaking to Andrew. <laughs> oh, so our, our co-host that's technically supposed to be here tonight but couldn't make it is on Xbox with you. Oh, no, no, no. Like, I, ta- I talked to him like for a few minutes at the start. He's, he's gone offline now. But yeah, for the oh, most part, like he's when t- I wasn't talking, I've actually He's been talking to me for the last half hour on Skype, so... <laughs> <laughs> he's ditched us tonight. We should give him a pat on away. He's already tea lady. We can't make him much worse than that. I got this message from him saying, hey, aren't you supposed to be on the podcast tonight? So I sent back, I am. <laughs> he, I, I, I went round to his house Thursday and he made me a cup of tea, so... I'm happy. Yeah. Well, yeah, but getting back to the topic at up. hand... Yes? It's not that kind of topic at hand. That's be the, quiet. That's the name of the thing and you're done. He said topic at hand, not topic uh, uh, of hand. But I'm <laughs> And this is what this is what happens when we take our funny pills. That is what happens when you invite me to a podcast. No, this this is just what happens on a daily basis. It's Friday the thirteenth, and yet we're all laughing in hysterics. Hmm. 
<laughs> because it's one minute until the so-called day of doom is over, you know? Doomsday? So, uh, yeah, not really. Who's going to bait the dust before the day is over? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll find it in the next 30 seconds. 29, um, 20, 27. No, no countdowns, no. No, no, no we're not going to do countdowns, please. Don't be pathetic. Yeah, top, anyway, topic and you, Dawn. Uh, I think it, I, I, um, I have a couple of points to make, one good and one negative. I think on the positive side, um, I mean, I know some people would say, oh, come on, it's just a rip-off of, me, of a, no, a title. I mean, honestly, I, what some people can say a rip off so I think it's the good, it's good nods. And that what I'm talking about there is, you know, obviously... A new hope, it's title. I mean, I think that's a good nod to. I know some people have yeah. said, oh, it's over, it's been done. Essentially, it's a rip off of a new hope's title, which I don't really get. I mean, well, it's a reference. Revenge of the Sith is, if it were, technically, Revenge of the Sith is a rip off of Return of the Jedi, be, uh, the exactly. title, because. Revenge yeah, of the Jedi? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know what you mean, but yeah, I don't really consider those rip offs, though. I mean, I just consider them. Just a reference. I, yeah, it's a good nod. I the yeah, I mean, exactly. Exactly. That's what. That's the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. It's a reference. It's a nice nod. It shows that they actually pay attention. You know. It's appreciation. So, it's showing appreciation for the franchise. Like exactly. And half the time, some fans don't seem to realize what appreciation is. Really. Definitely. Uh, it seems yeah. to get mistaken more often than not for play, uh, plagiarism or you know just copying. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, and I, I mean, sure, it would be great to see. Uh, a, very original title, but I mean, sometimes less is more when you say. Yeah, no, I, I can agree. Mm. Yeah. I, can agree. I mean, yeah. it could, it could yeah. be worse. They, it could, they could have just said, um, I mean, they, they, could have, they could have made a lot of more, like, way worse titles. Than yeah, oh anyone. god, yeah, definitely. They, they could have just called it, like, uh, they, they, could, they could, could have called it something cheesy, like, New Beginnings, or Oh, yeah. yeah, that would have been Star Wars the musical. Yeah, Star Wars the Instead, they just took a bit of a, off of a song and just said, "Oh, we'll call it this." But it's still only a rumor for now. Maybe it yeah. will be a complete original. Maybe it will serve a new dawn. And I think, to be honest, I wonder if any complaints if it was oh. a new dawn. I think that would work. Definitely. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So do you want to wrap up before we lose our minds once again? Yes, I think we should. If not, I'm, I'm going to have a heart attack of last, laughter here. Um, so make sure to check out our YouTube channels. The podcast is www.youtube.com slash user slash voice of the republic one. Check out mine at www.youtube.com slash user slash 14 Mr. Das. Check out Rory's at www.youtube.com slash user slash separatist destroyers. And check out Graham's at www.youtube.com slash user slash Graham, Graham oh, 09 or however it's called. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is say Graham's name is there and 09. How difficult can it be? When you've been laughing for hey, the last dude, half hour. <laughs> No okay. excuses, and more importantly, no disintegration. And I'm just gonna do the same as next week. I'm just gonna <laughs> do the. I'm just gonna do the same as last week. Check out Lizzie's website, and if Lizzie you'd like to read it, <laughs> <laughs> that's cheating. Um, <laughs> uh, check out mine, Moidian and Duro's website at sempermoidiana.weebly.com. I will get it someday. Don't you worry. And check out the Summer Spring. Yeah, like heck. <laughs> at theforcebook.com and don't forget to check out Greg Berger, um, Berger's website at www.gregberger.com Did you just call him Greg Berger? <laughs> I swear I heard Berger. Check out our friends at the Clone Wars Weekly podcast at www.facebook.com slash pages slash Clone Wars Weekly <laughs> You can't even string a sentence together today. <laughs> You had one job, Daniel. One job. <laughs> and you're doing it wrong. You're fired. I, I feel the Christian Bale rant coming on. And check out channel one one three on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash channel one one three eight. And finally, check out our sponsors, Hunter Toys at www.facebook.com slash pages slash 
Hunter Toys. So yeah, yay, we actually managed to get to the end. What? <laughs> um, but yeah, um, we have journeyed. <laughs> but yeah, um, and next week obviously is our big week. It's a big one. Yes, yeah, definitely. Wow. Hopefully, hopefully you're all excited. And if not, then shame on you. <laughs> it's a disgrace. You shouldn't even be yeah. listening to this if you're not excited. <laughs> well, technically, Graham is talking with us. Is that even more what this is for? Um, <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> great, great, Graham lived, lived and up the atmosphere quite a bit last the, tonight. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you don't know what you're saying anymore. No, you don't. Please, <laughs> please help me. <laughs> okay, no, I'll no. wrap it up for you. Where were you? No, it's fine. Um, and finally. No. Okay, okay, okay. As we can see, Daniel is very incapable of wrapping this up. So I'll say it for you. I like Clown Commander Wolf and made a force be with you. And Always. That's how you want to wrap it up. Always. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, generally okay so we get wolf in a wrap-up oh and this I, i'm still recording and we're still live oh okay um, <laughs> bye guys <laughs> okay now you're uh <laughs> <laughs>